Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, no problems. <laughs> but today we want to talk about something a little intriguing. Uh, we've been learning about how planets revolve around uh, the sun or other uh, suns. But today we want to learn about how that works and how they specifically work. And it, it, it goes to the work of some cool dude named Kepler. Uh, Johannes Kepler. He was a he worked for, he worked with a guy. He's a very fascinating individual. He worked with this guy named Tycho Brahe. Tycho Brahe was the the preeminent sort of astronomer uh, observer. He took the most detailed observations of the motion of the planets, like ever, like super crazy accurate with like multiple you know significant digits, and then Kepler. Not really the big guy to look at the stars, but he looked at the numbers and he began to say, well, he said, Houston, we have a problem. You see, the old version of how the universe went together, let's, let's kind of really short, crazy history lesson. In the old days, they thought that the sun revolved around the earth and the planets revolved around the earth and, and their planetary system looked like this, very complex. And then you got the moon and it did its weird stuff. It, it was just all crazy. And then this guy named Copernicus came along and he said, no, 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 folks. The sun is the center of the solar system and everything revolves around it. And that just rocked the world, totally rocked the world. And then once that happened, Kepler started figuring this out and he said, how does it go around? Because what it was thought was if this was the sun, then the earth went around in a perfectly circular orbit. But Kepler wasn't happy with that. You know why he wasn't happy? It wasn't perfect. He was the guy who wanted perfect numbers because his buddy, or his mentor really, Brahe said, the numbers don't add up. And so he says, guys, I don't think it's circular. It's kind of circular. This led to what we call Kepler's laws. Laws. And there are three laws. Law number one. He says, they don't move in a circle, they move in an ellipse. An ellipse? Now, do you know what an ellipse is? Let me show you how to draw an ellipse. So how do we draw an ellipse? Super crazy easy. I've got two push pins, a piece of paper. Um, it's sitting on top of a piece of cardboard. I'm going to put this here, two push pins here and here. I'm going to take my string. You can see my string. Now that's two. If it was one, this would work perfect if it was a circle. But we don't have a circle. We got an ellipse. And I'm going to make myself an ellipse. You might notice this looks pretty circular, probably from your perspective, but it is going to be, in this case, longer this way than this way. So let's say draw an ellipse. So let's just, I, I should make some. In Kepler's first law is that uh, planets, actually everything, orbits in an ellipse. All right, that's his first law. Now the second one is, I think, the more intriguing. So I'm going to try and draw an ellipse by hand because this is going to be important. So if this is an, an interesting thing, the sun is at this port, portion of the ellipse. Now I'm overstating it because in the earth it's much more circular. It's not quite as elliptical as this. But this is, his second law is the law, the law of equal areas. So if I've got a planet here and it's going to travel at a certain velocity here, then the area that's carved out by the planet, and this is t equal to, let's say, you know, the same time, let's say, you know, uh, 10 days or something like that. Okay, when the planet, you know, it's moving in this direction here, when the planet gets over to here, it, this is 10 days. But look what's going to happen. This area here is equal to this area here. Turns out it's a, it's a function of what we call the uh, law of conservation of angular momentum. We didn't understand all that back in the day, or Kepler didn't, but it's moving. Now, this, there's some implications to this, if you think about it for a moment. If this is the sun, and it makes like a million percent sense, from here to here is moving slower than it is from here to here, because this is a further distance. The arc distance here is bigger than this, right? So over closer to the sun, you're going to have a faster orbital speed. This is the speed, the orbital speed. And over here, you're going to have a slower orbital speed. And, and it makes sense because when he's closer to the sun, he's going to be moving faster because there's greater force, which greater force, greater acceleration, moving faster, further away, less force, less attraction. So if it's in orbit, 
All right, this is called the law of equal areas, Kepler's second law. But at this point, I want us to do a little bit of uh, sort of diagramming of an ellipse. Ellipses are fascinating from a mathematical perspective. We're going to put um, some, some dots on here. Let me get a different color. And some of these make total sense. This right here is the center. <laughs> Duh. These spots here on the edge, you know, where we put the, 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 the pencils, whatever, or the, the push pins, I mean, these are called the foci, F-O-C-I. There's two foci in every ellipse. And then we've got two heights, a height and a, uh, so from, from, from here to here, and then from here to here. And we call this one, I forget now, I better make sure. Yeah, this is called the major axis, and this is the minor axis. The big one is the major axis, the little one is the, the minor axis. Because you can have an ellipse that's really elongated like this, but you can also have an ellipse that's much more circular. I didn't draw it very well. Um, that's barely elliptical, where the, you know, the, the center is here and the foci are here and here. So it's, it's very close to, to this. And so you can measure some things about this, right? So we're going to call them some interesting things. Um, this right here is, um, put a B here. This is B. And this spot would be negative B, negative B. And this right here would be negative A and A, if you will. So A is really the distance of the major axis, and B is the distance of the, of the minor axis. Because it, it leads us to an interesting concept, and the interesting concept is something called eccentricity. So eccentricity is to the degree that the ellipse is elliptical, the, the more elongated it is. So it's called eccentricity, which I can never spell. E -C -C -E -N -T -R -I City. Eccentricity, eccentricity. There you are. There you go. It's kind of a crazy, weird term. And the eccentricity is the degree to which it's elliptical, and it's actually a number between zero and one. Um, if it's uh, closer to one, it's very elongated. And if it's zero, it's actually a circle, because actually it comes down to an interesting equation. The eccentricity is e, and that equals one minus b squared over a squared, all square rooted. And it's a number between 1 and 0. And if you think about it, if uh, b and a are 0, or the same number, pardon me, if it's um, you know, 2 and 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then that would be a circle. So a, a, an ellipse, a circle, is actually an ellipse where the eccentricity is 0. All right. So anyways, interesting mathematics about how all this works. And, uh, you know, for the Earth, I, you know, it's probably very, very close to zero. It's very because of uh, the Earth and the Sun, because it's very close to circular, but, but not perfect. And then lastly, let's add one more term that I think is important when we talk about planets and all that stuff, is when the planet is closest to the, to the uh, Sun, so closest to the foci, we give a name to this spot when it's very close. The closest is called the perihelion. I may be perihelion. Helion. So the, the Earth, when it's going around the Sun, eventually reaches perihelion, which is closest to the Sun. And then the reverse, when it's furthest away, this is called the aphelion. A-P-H-E-L-I-O-N. So uh, when it's furthest away, it's aphelion. When it's closest, it's perihelion. Now, you would expect, right, it's going to be much hotter when it's closer to here because it's closer to the sun and much colder when it's here. That actually isn't the case because the Earth is actually, it, it, the orbit is so much circular and there's other things going on. But if you had a, a planet with a very elliptical orbit, you would definitely see this um, where there would be different temperatures depending on whether you're in perihelion or aphelion or any between, in between. So uh, Kepler's First and second laws. There are three laws, but we're going to save the third law because it gets kind of complex for the next video. Houston, we had no problems because you are crazy awesome. Awesome. You're the awesome. <laughs> See you in class.